All right. Welcome to another installment of the Fragment to Silicon Reviews. Three reviews up this week, one impressions video. First game up on the docket is Panic Porcupine. Now, if you remember, we uh, we did an interview about this game just uh, on Wednesday at time of recording. It's actually been a while since we've done a game we actually did an interview for a review kind of deal, but here it is. Um, though, in case you missed the interview... Uh, Panic Porcupine is a meat-like, hedge-like mashup. Dr. Provincialists, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, should have asked, um, is snatching up the chicka burbs. Help Panic blast through over 50 sa stages of topsy-turvy, spike-laced, slime-drenched, and buzzsaw-filled death traps to rescue them. And remember... There are no rings. Um, prepare to be challenged. Panic Porcupine combines loop-to-loop -loop momentum platforming action with wall-to-wall -wall obstacles for an edge-of-your-seat adventure like no other. Sharpen your skills over 50 saw blade pack stages as you rescue the chicka burbs from the evil Dr. Provincialatus. Track down the hidden eggs if you're a completionist or replay stages to tighten your speedrun times. Right, so going back to the actual interview, um, the creators of this game actually described this more as a Sonic, pu uh, like a puzzle game in the Sonic mode. I believe they uh, put it. That's because, like, um, I think in spite of their mild protests about calling this a Sonic tribute game. <sighs> Look, it's a Sonic tribute game. Or... I mean, the or... Um, thing at the you know, start of the game was kind of a dead giveaway, guys. Right. Though, I, I think maybe the point they were trying to articulate and didn't quite hit the mark is this is kind of a Sonic response game. But, you know, however way you want to frame that, um, there were a lot of those games in the 90s. You know, like... Almost too many to count. <laughs> you're not wrong. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I ain't joking. Because, once again, like, as I pointed out, like, Mario holds a tremendous sway and influence over the industry. But you'd be hard press to point out a, another Mario alike. Some, somebody who is distinctly trying to go after that Mario vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, quite frankly, I like, outside of maybe the giant, uh, or the gallant Gianna, uh, the Gianna uh, sisters? The, yeah, the Gianna sisters. Um, there weren't too many direct um, interpretations of Mario. And I imagine the debacle with the Guiana sisters is probably partly why. Par uh, partially, but it's also, you know, Mario wasn't designed as a mascot. He just fell into the, uh, the position. Hell, there are more Pac-Man clones than there are Mario clones. Das really did like making, having Pac-Man clones. Good lord. Yeah. Um, but Sonic? Oh, God. <laughs> so, you know, Sonic was, you know, literally engineered to be a mascot. Mm -hmm. And everyone else decided to take a stab at that. But I think that's where this game differs. Um, because... You know, now, obviously, you know, the panic porcupine thing, you know, it's a bit tongue in cheek. Um, obviously, you know, it's a, you know, it's almost a parody kind of deal or satire, you know, using, you know, 
a I'm like I'm trying uh, like I'm trying to remember the a exact relationship between a porcupine and a hedgehog because you know uh, they're similar animals but they're not the same. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. Not that it matters all that much because uh, you know, spoiler alert, Sonic is not an actual interpretation of what a hedgehog is. You know, No more than Knuckles is of an echidna. We don't get into that. <laughs> Probably for the best. I, but, you know, the biggest dif like uh, the biggest difference here is um, the actual design of the game. And th the fusion cuisine that uh, the developers have decided to imbue upon said game. And that is, you know, they describe it as a, you know, mashup of Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Meat Boy. Which is a bit of its own unique flavor. As I can't think of any one of these, you know, maskist platformers that you know, went specifically after Sonic the Hedgehog before. Like, and, you know, I suppose the core question here is, is this a fusion that uh, works? And I'll say, yeah, it works well enough. You know, it, um, one could argue that... The, uh, you know, this game isn't as good as Super Meat Boy, but I'm like, look, Super Meat Boy is uh, uh, like operating on a different level, quite literally. Uh, get it? It's a video game joke. Well, it's more Super Meat Boy has different mechanics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more the question is, do, does this fuse Sonic gameplay well with well enough with Super Meat Boy gameplay? And it's like, uh, well enough, you know, like the, the thing that fuses the, mo the most is the pacing. You know, I've gone on about this before with other um, masochist platformers. Pacing is one of the most important things it can have. And, you know... This game has a very fast pace, as you'd expect. But let's not forget that, you no, know, Sonic doesn't necessarily always have fast pacing. You, Marble Zone. That was kind of the thing. The whole thing with Sonic is, like, the first levels are typically pretty fast. But most yeah. of the time, especially with 2D, it was more of a platforming challenge with a little bit of speed yeah. than... Just straight up go fast. Yeah. But, you know, where they describe it as kind of a puzzle game is, you know, it, because it's not, um, you know, it doesn't have rings, it doesn't have enemies, you know, it's more about figuring out how to traverse the level itself. It, you know, that's where you're trying to uh, figure things out, so to speak. Although, you know, if we were rating this on a puzzle game, no, th this would not have been a very good puzzle game. No. Like... It would need a little bit more deterministic physics for that. Mm. Like, you know... It, and I think another reason why they build it as so is because... Um, in order to compensate for the stripping away, uh, stripping down the Sonic gameplay to its core, basically, um, in terms of like actual mechanics, you know, there's no spin dash, there's no super peel out, there's no um, anything of that nature. 
Uh, you can, in, term, can, in Sonic terms, you can slow roll down a hill, good luck, have fun. Yeah. Um, you actually have to do the Sonic 1 um, dealie of using the natural momentum of things to proceed. And, yeah, that's as fun as I remember it. That is to say, not very fun. You know, I, like I get the I get their intent, but there's a reason why Sonic. Two, as soon as the uh, spin dash was in, introduced, Sonic never looked back on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess you could make the argument with um, Sonic CD, but even Sonic CD had the super peel out. You saw the spin dash CD. No, you, no, the, the super peel out is not the spin dash. No, no you also could spin dash. Oh. Would you? Like, yeah. I, I might be misremembering there because I, I just remember the super peel out being the big showcase move there. But the, the ultimate point I'm going for here is Sonic learned very quickly that being able to control your momentum was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And also, like, yeah, um, this game is doing things that Sonic... Uh, yeah, this is where I stopped. And I think you can see why. Yeah. Carnival Night, because, this is not. Yeah. Like... Or... It's the annoying part of Carnival Night Zone ratcheted up. Mm -hmm. Again, with, if this had a little bit more deterministic physics, this would be a lot more fun. Yeah. You, you might want to define what you mean by deterministic physics. Where if you... Specifically, the angle you take off something is the angle you will go. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can hear glancing blow off these balls and it's not where I'm expecting I should be going. Yeah, I mean, that, that's always been kind of baked into the Sonic formula. A bit of the old chaos theory. Fair. You know, it's like... I, I think ever, I, I think we've all had moments of... We do not feel it completely in control with Sonic's momentum and movement. <laughs> like, Sometimes literally. <laughs> Thanks, Dimps. <laughs> no, I'm not over Sonic 4. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Yes, I think that was apparent on Wednesday. <laughs> so, that's why it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of the goals that w were set out by the development team here. You know, like, you actually made your um, Sonic alike fairly different. But... You know, would I rather play this over an actual Sonic game? No. No, I, I would not. I mean, now, depends granted, on the some... Sonic game for me, but yeah, for the most part. You know. It's also, you know, I've gone on record in my feelings of masochistic platformers. They're not really my bag. And th that holds true here. And I couldn't help but feel that this game was just, you know, in spite of boiling things down, it, it was fairly gimmicky. Though I think that comes down to the stage design. And the fact that, you know, you have to, you know, you're literally dealing with a whole bunch of stage gimmicks from level to level. Yeah. Which, on the one hand, does keep things fresh. Like, um, it's also um, compensating for the fact that these levels are really small. Mm hmm. Um, micro sized. Yeah, they're, like, almost the size of, like, Sonic Hackathon contest levels. Mm. That's like a good I... way of putting it. Hmm? That is a good way of putting it. 
I mean, it's almost like I've played a few Sonic ROM hacks or something. <laughs> yes. You know, make, make no mistake, this game is by no means bad or anything. I, it's just... Um, I don't think it ever raises above a certain level. Indeed. Yeah. Like, it's a solid 6 out of 10 game, but I don't, um, but I think that's about the peak of it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, so. Let me see. In terms of pricing. Um, right. So this game is fairly affordable. Um, clocking in regularly at $7.99, $8. Or it is on sale currently at $5.99. Like, but I like to keep track of the normal pricing here at eight dollars i think this is a fine purchase now and certainly at um six dollars um 5.99 you know it's just if you're short on patience you might want to uh think twice Because you're going to be playing this game, uh, the game levels over at least a few times because the difficulty is ratcheted up. And it's up front about that. The levels are really short, but it's very spiky and you don't, you know, you don't have any of the sonic protections with you. So you're going to die quite a bit. Right. Um, anything else to add to the proceedings, Petty? Uh, not really. All right, then. So that'll about do it for Panic Porcupine. Be sure to uh, tune in after the break, as Petty will be reviewing Faircraft's Antiques, The Mountaineer's Legacy, Collector's Edition. <laughs> 